In the next part of this lecture, we are going to talk about the trace element. Before we discuss the vitamins, now the next one about the trace elements. The trace elements uh, that's classified that usually the body do have two major mineral sources. We do have to talk about the macro or major minerals such as the sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, sulfur, chloride, and presence in the body tissues at a concentration of bigger than 50 mg per body weight kilogram. The micro or the trace minerals, the body relatively needs less, such as the chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, molybdenum, copper, zinc, fluoride, iodine, selenium, zinc, silicon, arsenic, nickel, and so on. This component is present in a body tissue as the concentration is less than 50 mg per body weight dose kilograms. Those present at a concentration of microgram per deciliter in a bloody fluid or milligram per kilogram body weight in a tissue, this is what we call the trace element. There are some ultra trace element when the concentration in the body fluid is in a nanogram concentration range, while in the tissues in microgram concentration range. The zinc uh, is a the chief function in the body is part of many enzymes, as a metal or protease enzymes. It's associated with the insulin, the hormone of the insulin. And it's involved in making genetic material and protein, immune reaction, transport of vitamin A, taste, perceptions, wound healing and making of sperms, and normal development of the fetal tissues. The significant source of the zinc is the protein-containing foods, red meat, shellfish, whole grain. The daily requirements is about 11 mg per day in men and 8 mg per day in a woman. And the upper level for the adult one is maximum of 40 mg per day. This is the picture showing the enteropancreatic uh, circulation, such as the sink in the food that usually is added to the mucosa cells in the intestine, store excess sinks in the metallotinin. And if the body needs sink, the metallotinin releases sink to the abdomen and transferring for the transport to the rest of the body and the pancreas uses zinc to make a digestive enzyme and secretes them into the intestine and again back to the circulation and of course the access of the zinc if the body doesn't need them the zinc is excreted in the shed intestinal cells the zinc and the deficiency symptoms can be to growth retardation, delete sexual maturation, impaired immune function, hair loss, eye and skin lesion, and loss of appetite. The toxic symptoms when we do have too much are very similarly loss of appetite, immune immunity, low HDL level, copper, and iron deficiency can be. The next trace element is a selenium. The selenium is important for a lot of process, physiological processes, such as the glutathione peroxidase acts with other antioxidants and free radical scavengers, regular thyroid hormones, for example, with vitamin E to protect cell and organs membrane from oxidative damage. The significant source of the selenium is the seafood and meat, whole grains, vegetables, depending on soy content. What we need is about 55 microgram per day. The upper limit is 400 microgram per day. The requirement determined based on the serum glutathione peroxidase activity. But the selenium is considered as a, for the cancer prevention, mental health, diabetes, production of thyroid hormones, or healthy hair, young skin, and weight loss. This is what we consider that selenium could be very good. But usually we do. Selenium deficiency symptoms usually predisposing to the heart disease is characterized by the cardiac tissue becoming fibrotic. There's a Cashem diseases. There's a congestive cardiomyopathy caused by the combination of dietary deficiency of the selenium and the presence of mutated strain of Coxsackie virus. 
hydrogen deficiency. For example, when we use the total parenteral nutrition with a supplementation of selenium. The toxic symptoms when you do have too much, it can be loss and brittleness of hair and nails, a skin rash, fatigue, irritability, a nervous system disorders, garlic breath odor, acute selenium poisoning can result in a cardiorespiratory collapse. And uh, usually when we are taking the grams, a lot of amount of the selenium. The selenium in cancer prevention, the epidemiologic evidence indicates low intake of selenium are associated with a higher risk of prostate cancer. A prospective studies of selenium supplementation demonstrates a 40% reduction in a cancer incidence. A small sample size of other confounding factors have diminished and enhanced for the results of these studies. The copper. Biochemical function of the copper is essential uh, catalytic factor for many uh, copper enzymes, including such as uh, copper, zinc, cyperoxide, dismutase, antioxidant, or cytochrome C oxidase, and ATP synthesis, and neurological function. Or ceroplasmin, there's a six uh, atoms per molecule, the functioning to oxidize ferro to ferry for binding to the transferrin. Congenital absence of this protein, ceroplasmin, leads to the tissue iron accumulation and iron overload syndrome, such as the hemochromatosis. Lysyl oxidase, the cross link and stabilize connective tissue proteins. Tyrosinase, the melanin synthesis necessary for absorption and the use of iron in the formation of hemoglobin. The significant source, the seafood, meat, nuts, seeds, cereals, and whole grains and cocoa. Need, we need about 400 microgram daily. The upper limit is maximum of 10 grams per daily. The requirement, again, determined by the serum glutathione peroxidase activity. The pathophysiology of the copper, the deficiency usually is very rare and usually caused by in causes the omission of the TPN, a high intake of zinc, renal dialysis patient, or use of copper chelating, uh, chelating and, uh, agents such as a penicillin, amine, and manifestations such as a hypochromic microcytic anemia, neutropenia, hyperpigmentation of hair and skin. The structural abnormality of connective tissue, the hair, teeth, bone, demineralization, vascular system with arterial aneurysm with risk of hemorrhage and thrombosis. The fetal and neonatal deprivation leads to neurological dysfunction. Reduced level of circulating copper and ceroplasmin. The toxic symptoms usually include the liver damage. Copper metabolism. The intestine metabolism, the membrane translocation mediated by a specific transporter system. Copper circulates the uh, bond to the ceroplasmin. Relative tissue uh, distribution of the copper reflects levels of copper enzymes. Excretion occurs via the transport of copper into the bile and eliminates in the feces. Manganese. Chief function in the manganese in the body, the cofactor for several enzymes. The significant source of manganese includes the nuts, whole grains, leaf, vegetables, and tea. Deficiency symptoms are very, very rare. Toxic syndromes include some nervous system disorders. We need about 2.3 mg per day in women, about 1.8 mg per day, and the upper limit maximum about 11 mg per day. Fluoride. The chief function in the body is involved in formation of bones and teeth. They can help the teeth to, res to be resistant to decay. The significant source, usually the drinking water, if fluoride containing or fluoridated one, tea and seafoods. Uh, deficiency syndromes include a susceptibility to the tooth decay. Toxicity symptoms is the fluorosis, and we do have a pitting and discoloration of the teeth. In Hungary, they used to supplement the uh, young one, the children with the age of three to five, giving some fluoride containing tablet. However, after, because this, let's see, load was too much and a lot of fluorosis developed, that is not only discoloration, but makes the bones and the teeth brittle. 
they stop using the body. Their need for men is about 3.8 milligram per day, and in women is 3.1 milligram per day. That is enough if you use some seafood or sea salt, for example, for making your salting with this seafood salt. Chromium. The chief function in the body is required for the normal lipid and carbohydrate metabolism that enhance the insulinic action. The supplementation can rise the HDL, the cholesterol. The, the efficiency symptoms include diabetes like condition, impaired growth, peripheral neuropathy, and negative nitrogen balance. The toxic symptoms include the chronic renal failure. The chromium, the significant source, is meat, special deliver, cereals, meat, porty, fish, broods, yeast, beer, and we need about 35 microgram per day, and women 25 microgram per day. You can choose whether you are drinking beer or taking some biochrome, as you wish. The cobalt, the chief function in the body, the component of the B vitamin B12, the cobalamin, essential for maturation of the red blood cells in a normal function of all cells. The efficacy symptoms include the related to vitamin B deficiency that's associated with the DNA synthesis or the myelin synthesis, macrocytic anemia or megarobastic anemia, pernicious anemia, and, and the neurological symptoms. Toxicity symptoms such as polycythemia, hyperplasia of the bone marrow, reticulocytosis, or increased blood volume. Molybdenum, the chief function in the body, the cofactor of many enzymes involved in the catabolism of the sulfur containing amino acids, the purines, and the pyrimidines. Uh, deficiency symptoms increase risks with a coexisting copper deficiency. Toxic symptoms, the goat like syndromes, reproductive effects in the animals. Significant source, for example, legumes, cereals, and organ meats. We need about, let's see, about four, 45 micrograms per day, and the upper limit is 2 grams per day. And if you look at this picture, this kind of plant studies, when we do have the control and we do not have any molybdenum in the soil, you can see that the leaves are not as strong and not as has the true gore comparing to the control.